This video has been made possible with the support of MSI. Links to their website and Facebook pages are in the description. So why not jump over and show them that we appreciate it. Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into Upgrade Addiction. Nice to see you back here again. Now in my last video, I did a liquid metal replacement on an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti for the Win 3 edition, which a lot of you seem to enjoy. But some of you were interested, including myself, on how that process would go if we did it on an MSI card which had a Twin Frozer 6 cooler on it. So I reached out to MSI, asked if they'd mind sending me a card to see how it would work, and they agreed. So let's go ahead and find out. So here it is, the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X Plus. This is a refreshed version of the GTX 1080 Gaming X, which features upgraded and higher clocked memory out of the box, now sitting at 11 GHz opposed to the non-plus version, which runs at 10 GHz. So let's go ahead and take a closer look around the card. And first of all, I think that MSI's current Gaming X range are some of the best looking cards I've seen, but I am a huge fan of red and black, and that may have something to do with my opinion. Now currently it retails for $929 Australian or $609 US and it's backed by a 3 year warranty. But make sure you stick around until the end because we're going to talk more about the whole warranty situation. It has a base clock of 1708 MHz and a boost clock of 1847 MHz. And as we said before it's packed with 8GB of GDDR5X memory clocked at 11GHz. This is what earns it the designation of PLUS. And as I said in the last video the OC figures provided by MSI are going to be irrelevant because GPU Boost 3 will take it well beyond those figures, even right out of the box, and then I'll overclock it as well. The Gaming X Plus features MSI's extremely quiet and effective Twin Frozer 6 cooler, featuring their double ball bearing Torx 2.0 fans, and when I say it's quiet, I really mean it. The fans go into something called Zero Frozer mode, which basically means that they won't spin at all until the core is above 60 degrees, but I can have the fans set manually to 85% before they're even audible. And I'm sure other owners of the card can back me up on that. The card has six heat pipes in total, with the largest being 8mm, and they're all evenly spaced throughout the fin array, but we'll get a better look at that when we take the cooler off. There is also a really nice backplate on the card, which has the MSI logo and the Gaming Plus branding, as well as ventilation cutouts, and of course the etched MSI Dragon. The card also has a mid plate, which helps provide structural strength to the body, and also aid in cooling the VRMs and memory chips as well. On the top edge and front face of the card there are also RGB LED zones which can be set to however you'd like and it measures in at 279mm long, 140mm tall, 42mm thick and weighs 1.1kg. Just like in the FTW3 video that I did, I'm going to use Thermal Grizzly's Conductor Nort because at this point, like I said, I'm pretty familiar with it and it's what I've used in the other videos. As far as the software goes, just to keep things in line with the other videos, I'll be using Unigen Heaven Benchmark to put load onto the card and to test its stability, but this time I'll be using MSI's Afterburner software, which in my opinion is still the best graphics card overclocking software available. And also I've got a pro tip here. In the description, you'll find two links to download Afterburner. One is to the MSI website with the latest official version, but the other is a link to a forum with the latest beta version. And you might want to consider downloading the beta version because it unlocks voltage control on the GTX 1080 Ti's, which is something that will be pretty important if you want to fully overclock your GPU. And the beta versions of Afterburner can be tricky to find, even if you know that they exist, so you're welcome. Just a couple more things to take note of before we jump into the testing. The room temperature or ambient temperature will be set to 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit thanks to my old mate Lucky here. The fan speed will be locked at 65% throughout the testing. I'll also be using Nvidia's 384.76 driver which is their latest driver at the time of filming. And usually I'd be using my test bench for these videos but due to a suspected power supply issue I'm just going to use my main gaming system. Okay, so we've got all that out of the way. Let's go ahead now and get some baseline figures. All right, guys, so what's the plan? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I've currently got Unigen Heaven looping here. It's been looping for uh, about 10 minutes already. I'm going to let it loop for about another 15 minutes just so it really settles in. What it's running at the moment is the card completely stock out of the box with only the fan curve changed to be 65% and, and locked. 
So what I'm gonna do is, once I know the stock clocks on the stock paste, I will then manually overclock it. So then we'll have both figures, we'll have the stock clocks and the overclocked uh, clocks on stock paste. That's a mouthful. Um, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and change the paste to the liquid metal or the conductor naught. Then we'll come back and run the same tests again and we'll see overall how it fared. So give me a second, I'll finish off the testing, I'll report back and then we'll go from there. Thanks guys. All right guys, so we're back and I've got the uh, results for the stock clocks and overclocked settings on the stock paste. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put overlays on the screen as I go through it because there's a lot of figures and I had to write them down. I don't have that good a memory, so forgive me for looking down at the sheet every now and then. Now, stock clocks. The core clock um, straight out of the box was 1987 megahertz, which is a really nice clock uh, considering it's a fair bump up on the advertised uh, boost speed. Again, that's obviously due to GPU Boost 3 doing its thing. Um, but it sat at 1987 megahertz and didn't move, which was really nice. The memory was 11,010 megahertz stock and the temperatures were 53 degrees maximum. So uh, what I'll do is, um, well, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've already put the overclock on it to save a little bit of time. So the settings were, and I'll put them on the screen, uh, plus 100 millivolts, 113% power target, 92 degrees temperature target, plus, when it, uh, plus 125 megahertz on the core and plus 500 megahertz on the memory. So that took the figures, uh, took the core clock to 2100 megahertz and that stayed solid. The memory to a whopping 12,000 megahertz, which was pretty amazing and seems to be quite happy there. Um, we're just about to finish a, a benchmark run too, by the way. And the temperatures went up to 59 degrees max. So it was a six degree jump over the stock clocks um, on the stock paste. So I think um, we've got our figures. Now, for those of you who are interested, using the overclock settings, it just ran Unigen Heaven at the Extreme preset, uh, 1920 by 1080 with eight times AA and scored 123.7 FPS. So run that against your system and see how you go. Um, that's a pretty good result for a 1080. So what I'll do now is we'll jump across. We'll do the uh, liquid metal replacement on the card. I'll show you the process for doing that. Then we'll come back and run the test and see what the result is. All right, guys, I'll catch you soon. All right, I'm just gonna slow it down for a second here, guys, because I wanna bring up something that seems to be discussed a lot in the comments of these videos. And it basically revolves around cooler base plates or graphics card base plates, aluminum, and the key ingredient in these liquid metal compounds, which is gallium. Now, first of all, the Gaming X cooler in this video is actually nickel-plated copper, which is totally safe to use with liquid metal, as are bare copper base plates. But if your graphics card cooler base plate is aluminium or has any aluminium in it, which, by the way, is extremely rare to non-existent nowadays, you can't use any form of liquid metal because the main ingredient, being gallium, will actually react with the aluminium and damage it or eat it away. So this is definitely something that you need to take note of and ensure that you do your own research if you decide to carry this out on any of your own hardware.
Okay guys, so now it's the time where we get to look at the results and see exactly how it reacted. So what we're gonna do first, we'll talk about the stock clocks with the liquid metal. So if we just rewind and refresh our memory, the core clock and the memory clock seem to be reacting the same regardless of the paste. The core clock is 1987 megahertz and the memory at 11,000 megahertz. But the temperature or the max temperature once we did the liquid metal replacement was 50 degrees. So it was a three degree drop over the stock clock stock paste. So, you know, a nice little, a nice little drop there. But when I applied the overclock settings and just to refresh your memory, we had plus 100 millivolts, 113% power target, 92 degrees temp target, plus 125 on the core and plus 500 on the memory. So that worked out to be a core clock of 2100 megahertz and memory clock of 12,000 megahertz. And the maximum clock that we got uh, after it was looping for about 25 minutes was 52 degrees. So it was a seven degree drop from the uh, overclock settings on the stock paste, which is a good healthy drop. You know, it's, it's more than 10%. It's getting towards, you know, nearly 15% of a drop there. So that's, that's significant. And seven degrees seems to be the magic number. That was the same drop that we had from memory on the 1080 Ti FTW3 that we did uh, a week or so ago. So uh, that seems to be a figure that is popping up. Now, I'm surprised by that a little bit because the Twin Frozer 6 cooler is very, very efficient and very effective at the moment, you know, already. So to see a seven degree drop just by changing the paste was pretty good. So I'm really, really impressed with that. And just to emphasize how good a result that is, 52 degrees on a GTX 1080, which is overclocked to its maximum point on this card anyway, 2100 megahertz on the core and 12,000 megahertz on the memory with the voltage increased, 52 degrees is an amazing number. Especially when you take into consideration, like I said in the FTW3 video, water cool graphics cards when they're overclocked do sort of low, mid and sometimes high 40s. So to be sitting at 52 degrees on an air cooled card just by swapping out the thermal paste is absolutely incredible. All right guys, so let's wrap this up then. So a couple of things I just wanted to talk about on the way out of the video. Uh, first was that I was pretty impressed with the result. I am of the opinion that the Twin Frozen 6 cooler is already really, really effective anyway. And I was pretty surprised that we still managed to get a seven degree drop on this cooler with the liquid metal. So I was really happy with that. Especially considering one of MSI's selling points for the Twin Frozen 6 coolers is something that they call their Professor X. Uh, I mean, compound X, compound paste. So, and I'm not sure exactly what that is, but to me, when I pulled the cooler off, it looked like it had the sort of look and consistency of something like EK Ectotherm. So I wonder if it's something that they either make in-house or if it's something that they get made for them. But I'd be really interested to know exactly what their compound X is. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the warranty. So obviously doing this on this particular card, and as far as I'm aware, most MSI cards, is that it's going to void your warranty. So take this video purely for entertainment purposes only. I don't know if I would recommend doing this to your card if it's going to void your warranty. Um, it already runs cool enough. It's not like it's hot out of the box like say a 7700K is or something. You don't need to do this. It was really just for entertainment and to see exactly how the Twin Frozen 6 cooler would go with the liquid metal. So. Uh, I guess that'll be your choice whether or not you think it's worth voiding your warranty to gain, well, gain or drop, what have you, seven degrees. Um, so that's purely up to you, but just be aware, in my opinion, I don't know that it's worth it in the long term. Now, there was actually one more thing that I wanted to do, which I almost forgot about, and I'm really glad that I didn't. That was... What happens if we put the fans to 100%? You know how I spoke just briefly before about water-cooled cards being mid-40s, you know, low, mid-high 40s for a water-cooled graphics card overclocked? What would happen if I put the fans to 100% and we really saw how low we could get this thing? So, what I did, um, jacked the fans up to 100%, and by the way, it's not even that loud, first of all. It's certainly nowhere near as loud, or not quite as loud as a Founders Edition, because um, they're pretty loud, but anyway, so, what temperature did we get? We got it settled at 44 degrees. So 44 degrees, 2100 megahertz, 12 gigahertz on the memory, um, over voltage, overclocked, and you know we're in the low 40s. That's amazing. So um, I'm really glad that we tested that out. We seem to uh, we seem to hit the magic 40s, and that is absolutely incredible for an air cooled card. So I'll put an overlay 
of this up as I'm talking here, just so you can see that I'm not telling you any porkies. And uh, it's just dropped to 43 now. So that's, uh, that's kind of blown my mind, just upping the fan percentage from 65 to 100% has dropped it almost another 10 degrees. So anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another video. Um, I've done a few cards now with the liquid metal. Um, I really, really would like to try and get a hold of one of MSI's uh, new 1080 Ti Lightning Z models. I'd be very, very keen to see how that reacts, but who knows? I'll try my luck with MSI and we'll see how we go. But um, as a bit of a bonus or a bit of extra footage, stay tuned after I finish yabbering along because I'll just put a, a quick unboxing of the Gaming X Plus, which I filmed but didn't put in the video so i'm going to tack it on as soon as i stop talking so if you want to see a, a quick and basic unboxing of the card stick around for that and um, if you like the video give it a like and comment down below and if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video thanks again see ya